I don't think we knew it was going to be history, but it, di it did seem like something that, uh, as it uh, progressed, it was hard just to let go, to just to think uh, this thing was going to happen without any kind of documentation at all. Yeah, it's a reportage or some sort, you know. It felt like we needed to do something about it. I mean, it started out that we were going to do uh, just the, the simplest thing. We were going to do a little 16 millimeter thing just to get it on film so, you know, someday we could look at it or we could do... And it just, uh, it snowballed, you know, and when I uh, got up enough nerve to ask uh, Martin Scorsese to become involved with it, then uh, we crossed over the line between uh, amateur time and uh, real filmmaker time. Could you uh, concentrate it on, a music, on, on it as a musical event, knowing that the elaborate uh, preparations had been taken to record it on 35 millimeter film in a way never been done before. I guess I have to ask you that as a musician, uh, Robbie. If it, if it affected your playing, your whole approach to the evening? No, it didn't because uh, Marty had figured it out in such a way that, uh, that the cameras did not uh, become an imposition on the, the audience or the people that were uh, performing because uh, you have one of those big Panavision cameras come zooming by you, you, f you forget uh, who you are. <laughs> Martin, you have made such uh, films as Taxi Driver, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, many award-winning uh, uh, other documentaries and so forth. You had a, literally one chance at this. It was one concert. You couldn't redo it, you couldn't retake it, you couldn't make it like an ordinary movie, right? Mm -hmm. It was a single event. Why would you want to take that on when you've dealt with the movie technique, which is take after take after take? Well, I just finished shooting uh, New York, New York. I shot that for 22 weeks, and I couldn't stop. I just wanted to shoot more, whatever, whatever, you know. And uh, Jonathan Taplin, who produced Mean Streets, uh, 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 introduced Robbie to me and uh, said, uh, there's going to be a lot of people at the concert. And uh, the band, I thought, was that important to, uh, as a group uh, and a figure in music uh, to uh, record their last uh, concert. And I figured at least it would be a reportage, you know, if anything. Mm -hmm. And then when we saw the results, we, we decided to shoot it in 35 millimeter. And I placed the camera in uh, seven 35 millimeter cameras. In certain seven? Positions. Yeah, seven. And, and uh, we had a lot of guest uh, operators like Laszlo Kovacs, Vilma Sigmund, people like that who came in for one day for the concert. And uh, uh, Bobby Byrd and people who are now DPs, uh, directors of photography. And we saw that some, somehow the, the 35 millimeter brought out the expressions of the, uh, of the band, the, the people on the stage. I decided not to shoot audience either. Because we've seen so many concert films, we see audience, no audience. Mm -hmm. We do see the audience in their, their point of view, from Robbie's point of view, or from behind, or whatever, that sort of thing. And somehow, uh, we felt that, the, the, when we saw the rushes, we uh, realized that we had a little more than we uh, thought we got, you know, and uh, we're going to get. And uh, then it kind of snowballed into a, uh, into a situation where I shot another whole week of three songs. One called The Wait, another song called Evangeline, another called The uh, Last Waltz, Last Waltz Suite. And they did that at MGM Studios. And those were done like a feature, uh, literally like a feature film. And that's after the film was sold to United Artists. That took uh, three days to, sh to shoot The Wait alone, one song, with the staple singers. And um, two days for Evangeline, one day for um, The Last Waltz Suite, which, which is the end of the film. And also then four days documentary. And so it took a while to shoot the whole picture and then put it together. And it becomes like a, not like a, r r r not like a recording of a concert, but like a, kind of a strange like oratorio or something, it goes on and on. And the music, it kind of, one song leads to another, which uh, leads to an emotion, emotionally, it well, works emotionally, see? And, and it talks about, about the different influences of music uh, and how it all blends together and uh, how it, uh, their music influenced by, uh, uh, <laughs> excuse me, influenced by, you know? And that's how what I think. You, how would you communicate between seven all-star cameramen when, this, when there is well, a I concert you, going on that is I not did, a string quartet? That, it was three weeks, three weeks before, right after, right after shooting New York, New York, it was three weeks I had. And Robbie gave me all the lyrics of the songs and gave me the actual lineup of the seven-hour concert. And um, in one column, he had who was singing what part. Then he had the lyrics. Another column, he had what instruments were important. And there was another column for lighting and another column for camera. So I fill in those two. I worked on lighting, worked on the sets with Boris Levin, who did New York, New York, and West Side Story and Sound of Music. And, um, and Mike Chapman helped me with some of the lighting. And uh, I did the camera positions, too. So cameramen basically memorized their positions. And whenever they run out of film, they sort of run back to the script, which was about 200 pages, <laughs> and uh, run back and say, "Oh, I'm supposed to be on, on, on Levon here on the drums." Okay, oh, oh, you know. And, that's, and also, I had a um, I had a intercom, which was uh, hard to use because you're right on the stage, you know, and it's blasting. 
and all you hear is, uh, you know, uh, somebody yelling, you're off the line, which means uh, who's off the line? <laughs> you know, what camera, uh, who's covering whom? It was a uh, chaos, you know. But uh, we, had the, we had the script, though. We could always refer back to that script, see? And uh, I don't believe any, any other concert film was script. You, you wouldn't repeat yourself, would you? If this having been done, would you now want to do anything else musically? I, I'd, uh, sure. Sure. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Uh, in terms of, it's really the matter of the music. I mean, the band was the most, most important to me, you see? And Neil Young and uh, Van Morrison and uh, uh, Dylan and, uh, um, and Muddy Waters and people like that, and Eric Clapton, uh, Johnny Mitchell. It's all very important people to me. I use uh, Eric Clapton's music in Mean Streets, and uh, I use it. Uh, so it's a very, they all connect. Yeah. It all means a lot, great deal to me.